My name is Chaitanya Haridas. Uh, by profession, I am a lecturer, but I also do uh, cross religious studies. Actually, I have prepared a question, but that question is not so relevant to the topic today. And because this question was is with me for many years, so, so I'm going to change the question that's relevant. Especially uh, respected Dr. Zakir, you have mentioned about the Vedas, the Upanishad, and the, all the, uh, some of the Ishopanishad. But uh, I like to quote a quotation here from Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanto 3, chapter 11, text 35, which says, Purushaya Paracharya Brahma Netra Maham Adbuta Kalpa Yat Brahma Brahma Sat Brahmati Yam Viruhu. The meaning is in the beginning of the first half of uh, Brahma Kalpa, where Lord Brahma appeared. Then Brahma's life, there is a million called Brahma Kalpa. The birth of Brahma, uh, the, the birth of Vedas was simultaneous with Brahma's birth. So here it's mentioned that Lord Brahma takes birth after birth. And the Vedas appeared when he take a birth. So in a, based on the literatures, Lord Brahma's age, full age is 311 trillion and 40 billion years. And if we go in that calculation, I think many of us here are bewildered. But this is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam. Another thing, I, why I mentioned this, because uh, Dr. Zakir has mentioned that the Vedas says that the Lord don't have a form. But in the same way, does also mention the Lord have a form. I quote another verse from Brahma Samhita, chapter 5, text number 1, which says, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Sachit Ananda Vikraha, Anadir Adir Govinda, Sarvakarnam Karnam. Ishwara Parama Krishna, it says, the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, is the Supreme Controller. Ishwara Parama Krishna. Sachit Ananda Vikraha, Sat mean. Sachit Ananda means eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. So he said, Sachit Ananda Vigraha. Vigraha here refers to the form, a transcendental form, which is given in the Vedas. I think uh, when we do a research on the uh, particular scriptures, I prefer that we have a whole idea that the Vedas also mention about the, the form. And I have many other quotes which says that the, the Lord has been realized in different forms. Which Veda are you quoting, brother? This is Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is not part of the Vedas. Vedas are four. Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved, Atharva Ved. Yes, I agree with that. Right? But the Brahma Samhita is yes. the Does commentary it? by Brahma. Uh, don't call commentary, quote the text. If you follow the commentary of the Quran, the commentary of Quran is written by human beings. You quote the text. As far as Vedas are concerned, there were many Vedas. Today, there's Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved, Atharva Ved. Yes, that we also there have four Quran, eight, we have also eighteen Puranas, hundred and eight Upanishads, hundred and eight brother, Isha Upanishads. Brother, you ask the question, let me and reply. We have you ask the question, let me reply. Okay. As far as the Hindu scriptures are concerned, the Hindu scriptures are divided into two types Shrutis and Smriti. Shruti is considered to be the word of God, revelation from God. In it, you have the Vedas, you have the Upanishads. Then you have the Smriti. Spriti is considered to be written by human beings. There you have the Ithyas, Ramayan, Mahabharat, Bhagavad Gita as part of Mahabharat. Then you have the Manuspriti. So between the two scriptures, the Shruti is superior than the Spriti. If there is a clash between a Shruti and the Spriti, you have to follow the Shruti, not the Spriti. Because Shruti is higher. Same way with the Quran. We have the Quran, then we have the Hadith. If there is a hadith which is not sahih, it clashes with the Quran, then we keep the hadith aside. What we have to believe in Quran and the sahih hadith, authentic saying of Prophet Muhammad There are certain things which people have manipulated. So when such manipulated hadith comes, what we do? We reject it. So now I am quoting you, Veda, Veda is the highest. No spriti can go against the Veda. If it goes against the Veda, we reject the spriti. We follow the shruti. This I'm talking from Hindu scholars. As far as the Vedas are concerned, the Vedas speak if you read Dayanand Saraswati, the founder of Arya Samaj. Correct? 
in the vedas it only talks about god who has got no image i know there are other scriptures like manusmriti and itihas in which it talks about god having image but a lower scripture cannot overrule a higher scripture when there is a conflict you have to follow the higher scripture that's the reason i have quoted you veda so if you get me a quotation from any book which is a smriti it cannot overrule the shruti point number 1 Point number two: Even if you get me quotation, if there's a contradiction in the Veda, then my follow book which has contradiction, <laughs> you take out one contradiction in the Quran. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number eighty-two: "Afala yadda burun al Quran, walau kana min indi gharilla, la wajudu fiktila fan kasira." Do they not consider the Quran with care that if there were contradiction in it, it would never be from God? If there is a contradiction, then that book is not the word of God. Do you understand? So we, as students of comparative religion, what we have to do? I am here to talk about similarities. I know there are many things which are differences in Quran and the Bible, Quran and the Veda. I am here to promote peace and harmony, not animosity. Therefore, Quran says, "Come to common terms, as between us and you." I know there are many things which I don't agree with the Veda. I am not going to tell you about that. Why? Because that will create animosity. So my thing, what I told you, let us agree to follow what is common. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. So let you and I agree. If you consider Veda to be word of God, I consider Quran to be the word of God. Let us agree to follow what is common. What is common is hundred percent the word of God according to you and me. But if you selectively don't follow passages of your scriptures, why be selective? You tell me anything from the Quran which I don't follow, I will say sorry and I'll start following. I don't claim to be a very 100% Muslim, but Alhamdulillah, as far as what's my capacity, I am trying to follow everything of the Quran. You point out a single verse in the Quran, whether you believe the Quran is the word of God or not. You point out a verse, and Inshallah, I'll follow. The same way when I am doing the same thing with the Bible, with the Vedas. If the Christian believes the Bible to be the word of God, if the Hindus believe Veda to be the word of God, you have to follow. I know there are contradictions, but I am not here to talk about the negative point of the scripture. I challenge anyone to point out a single contradiction in the Quran. There is none. As far as the age of the Veda is concerned, according to Swami Dhanil Saraswati, the Veda is 1,310 million years old. But the majority of the scholars today of Hinduism say the Veda is approximately 4,000 years old. Today, the scholars say we don't know to whom the Veda was revealed, in which part of the world it came. There are differences. Quran, everything is authentic. Yet the scholars believe, even though we don't know what is the exact age of the Veda, even though we don't know where and which part of the world it came the first time, even though we don't know which sage it came to, yet the Hindus as a whole they believe Veda to be the most sacred because they believe I respect it. I may not agree everything of it because I respect. I try and take out the commonalities. So as I told you, Veda talk about. Nathas sepati masti of that God there are no images. Panishads talk about that. Vedas talk about that. So if you get me a scripture which is lower, does not contradict, it cannot overrule the Vedas. And if you tell me that there are verses in the Veda talking about, then there's a contradiction. So you as a Hindu, you have to try and find out why this contradiction is there. No book of Almighty God, if it's in its true form, can have any contradiction. Same thing. We believe Quran mentions Injil. The Wahi which was given to Isa Alayhi Salam is the word of God, but the present Bible, I can point out hundreds of contradiction. I don't want to do it. I know I'm a student of comparative religion. So what I say, the present Bible is not hundred percent the word of God. It's a mixture. It contains the word of God. It even contains the word of the prophets. It even contains the word of the historians. It even contains pornography. I'm sorry to say that. It contains obscene things. So me, as a student of comparative religion. I'm not here to criticize the Bible. I'm talking about commonality. Let's come to common terms. If I try and criticize, that will bring animosity. There are certain passages of the Bible I cannot read to you. Even if you give me a million dollars, I cannot read. Even if you give me a million US dollars to me and say read this passage in front of the audience, I cannot because my religion doesn't allow to read obscene things in front of the audience. You understand, na? But I'm not here to degrade the Bible. I'm talking about common things. Same thing with the Hindu scripture. As far as the Quran is concerned, the language of the Quran is so sublime. 
You can eat anywhere in the world. You can eat to your wife, you can eat to your children, you can eat to your father. But certain passages of the Bible, I cannot. So here, brother, I've come for communal harmony. And based on that, I have done research on the Hindu scriptures, on the Jewish scriptures, on the Christian scriptures. Unfortunately, people of most of the religions, they blindly follow what is mentioned by the church, what is mentioned by the temple. What we have to do is we have to ask them for proof. But if you're truthful. So that's the reason what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. Chapter number, verse number. If I say alcohol is prohibited, carries no weight. Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, alcohol is prohibited. So based on this, brother, I am trying to get the Hindus, the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims together to come on a common platform and at least agree to follow what is common in the scriptures so that universal brother will increase. Hope that answers the question. But Dr. Zakir, I think you are limiting the knowledge that is in the Vedas. Vedas contain all the knowledge. That is what Vedas mean. So if you say, I only take the Smriti, not the Smriti, so that is limiting because in the, uh, the way that we are taught, okay, we are, I'm saying, there's not one word in the Vedas say Hinduism. So, but always we talk about Hinduism. Hinduism comes in the few thousand years ago. Only word is there is Sanatan Dharma. So okay, I'm I'll referring come to, to Sanatan See, you're asking Dharma. question, I'll reply, but every question requires an answer which takes few minutes. I'm not saying don't follow Smriti, but if there's a contradiction between the Smriti and the Shruti, the Shruti carries more weight. For example, you go to a doctor who's a specialist, heart specialist, who's done BM in cardiology, and a general physician, MBBS, who's talking about heart. Who will you believe? Suppose the mother has a heart attack. After MBBS, MD. After MD, it's DM. He's DM in cardiology. Will you follow him or will you follow MBBS doctor for heart specialty? Suppose the mother has a heart attack. Who will you follow? The one I have faith with. Sorry? When you have faith with, who will have faith more as a logical person? A DM of heart specialty or MBBS doctor? Even though a person can have higher uh, No, not knowledge. can. If you don't know both Even of them. I have higher knowledge, maybe he is not experienced. But you have two people, you have come first time to a country and one has DM, one has MBBS. Who will you take your mother to? The one who has a D. Correct. So similarly, when there is a contradiction between Shruti and Smriti, you have to follow Shruti. That's what the Hindu scholars say, not I. Anywhere in the world. So you have to tell Hindu scholars are wrong. Now, now, coming, coming to your word. See, every time you're asking a new thing, I have to clarify. You said the word Hinduism is not there in the Hindu scriptures, correct? Jawaharlal Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, in his book, Discovery of India, he says the word Hinduism is not there in any Indian literature until the Arabs came to India. This word Hindu was given by the Arabs. The Arabs gave the word Hindu to the people who live in the land of the Indus. Even today, when I go to Saudi, they call me Hindi, Hindi, Hindi. So Hindu is a geographical definition the word Hindu was given by the Arabs, people living in the land of Indus. So Hindu is a geographical definition for the people living in the land of the Indus Valley. By geographical definition, I'm a Hindu. By geographical definition, I'm a Hindu and a Muslim. Indian Muslim, Hindu Muslim. But if you say Hindu, means those who believe in worshipping idols, then I'm not a Hindu. According to Swami Vivekananda, Hinduism is a misnomer. The right word should be Vedantist. Because they follow the Vedas. Hinduism is a misnomer. It was a word, a title given by the Arabs when they came to India. And today also it has on. Even today when I go to Saudi, they call me Hindi, Hindi. Yes, I'm a Hindi. And I'm proud to be a Hindi. But I don't believe in doing idol worship. So coming to Hinduism, this is a misnomer. The right word is Vedantist or can be Sanatratham. I agree with you. And Sanatar term, believe that God is one and God has got no images. Show me one person who's a pure follower of Sanatar term who says that God has got image. That means you have not studied Sanatar term. Have you studied Sanatar term? I'm still studying. That's why I say Still studying, just, yeah. yeah. You are yet studying. Is, uh, you have not passed MBBS also yet. Right. You have not passed MBBS also. Quran says, Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 43, and Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, Fas'alu ahali zikri in kuntula ta'alamun. If you don't know, ask the person who is an expert. So I hope that answers the question. Brother, you can, for next question, you can go behind the queue, behind the other non-Muslims. Thank you, brother. We will move to this side of the mic.